I come from an education background. I have two degrees, both of them in education. I work now in the corporate education field. And so to step out of that world into homeschooling, home education, in some ways it's been scary because that's stepping away from all the things I've been taught, all the things I lived growing up, all the things that you were expected to do. You can take a look at home educating. That scares people right off the bat. People automatically go, well, now I've got to bring school home and I don't have the time and I don't have the knowledge. I don't have, which again, I like to point out the irony. All of us went through this system that now left us feeling ill-equipped to teach our own children. So we're going to put our children back in the system that left us feeling ill-equipped to teach them in the first place because we don't remember anything, which means for sure they're not going to remember any of it. And then they're going to have to, again, that speaks to the, the how strong the pull of that system is. We're taught to follow the recipe. And so often we're not ever actually stopping to ask ourselves who created the recipe? What's the purpose of the recipe? What are we actually making? What's the end goal of it all? And it's almost to the point where as a society, we've, we've created this, this structure, this path that may or may not have relevance. I played the game very well myself. Graduated with all A's, honor student. I don't remember anything. I, none of it's applicable to my, to my real life. And so I was having this realization um, because Bryce was like, well, all I'm doing is learning it and taking the test and I can make an A. And I'm like, well, wh what did you learn? Nothing. Okay, well, that's a waste of time. <laughs> Let's do more of that. And then my youngest, every time I put a piece of paper in front of him or, or tried to have an academic anything, just broke him. Uh, when, I, when I was in kindergarten, I was sent to the principal's office and get, got paddled because I had so much energy, right? They said that you couldn't come back to this school unless you're on uh, medications. They told me that. I was duct taped to chairs. I was paddled because I just had, there was nothing wrong with me, but I had energy and I had a lot of energy and I needed challenges. I needed direction. I needed movement. If you sat me down in a chair, I was in hell. That is purgatory to a seven-year-old boy. Schools will talk about the triangle all the time, right? Where you got the school over here that's partnering with the, the student and the parent. It's not a partnership, it's a dictatorship. I need to sit there for six hours. I need to look at that white board and do the things that I'm telling you to do on that board. You wanna talk about, like even now, as like a middle-aged man, nothing sounds more torturous than doing just that. And the thought of me asking one of my children to go and do that is absolutely insane. Nobody would go work somewhere, anywhere. And the boss goes, okay, by the way, I'm gonna have you start working on this task. Whether you like it or not, there's a bell that's gonna ring. And like Pavlov's dog, you're gonna go move to a different thing. You don't actually have you know, um, a whole lot of lunch breaks. I don't want you to talk when you're moving from one task to another because you are going to be changing buildings, but I want you to be quiet. I want you to go stand behind that other man that's right there in front of you. And there's going to be another man right there. You guys do not talk. In fact, put your hands behind your back here. I want you to walk over there. We might let you go to the bathroom during that time. We might not, but while you're working, if you have to go to the bathroom, you raise your hand and ask, we may not actually let you do that. And then by the way, you're gonna work your eight hour shift and when you get done, you're gonna go home and we're gonna send more work home with you. You're gonna go, who would sign up for that job? But that's what we do to our kids. And we do it for 12 years. That's why I call this the biggest religion in our country. Because if you're curious enough to ask the question, the hardest thing to do is be brave enough to then make a decision and take on responsibility for the answers that you find.
When you wake people up and they realize what's going on, but they don't know what to do, they're scared. At this point, I have talked through this with thousands of parents. The logical progression of this conversation, I, I rarely will have anybody that goes, okay, this doesn't make any sense. Almost always people will go, okay, yeah, it makes sense. But it's that emotional attachment to, this is the way it's always been done, so I still feel like I need to do it this way, or if I really want to actually believe this, then I've got to make that decision, right? I've got to pull this out so it's easier a lot of times to even just say the system broke. And I'm just, here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and say that I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight this. I'm going to show up to the school board. I'm going to show up to the PTA meetings. I'm going to show up to this because then I can still feel good about the fact that I'm fighting this while I'm still sending my my child in there. So a lot of people, what they'll they'll say the things they wish they believed and then what they do is what they believe or what they're brave enough to believe. I don't know of a family right now that's like, wow, the public school system, man, it's just crushing it. We just love it. Our kids are thriving and we just can't wait for them to go tomorrow and they just love it. I don't know of a family that it, that's experiencing that. Schooling as is, are we raising people who are recipe followers? Or are we actually raising people who can step out and be leaders? So instead of following the recipe and following the conveyor belt, Instead, it's setting those kids up so that they can follow the passions, learn just in time what they need to know so that they can continue showing up in the world. You know, and as Matt will say, the system's not broken. The system's doing exactly what it's designed. The system is breaking us as people. It's breaking our children. They're like, hey, we're the school. We're all partnering. By the way, kid, we're going to tell you exactly what to do. Parent, we're going to tell you exactly how to stay out of what we do. And so the question is, if we've got this system that is so damaging to our kids, why is it that people keep participating in it? It's because it's all they've known. You, it, it, it's by design. It brings us in, we're sold a lie, a big fat lie. But if you look at the child that's a product of the system, it, it's usually not good. Kids are needlessly suffering at the hands of a system that was never ever designed or created to benefit them. Humans want to have input. We have thoughts. We want to go do something. We want to create something. Inherently, we want to create something good, I believe. A lot of times we can be influenced otherwise, but we want to go do something. We want to go create something. And all we have around us are things telling us, no, be quiet. Your thoughts don't matter. Your desires don't matter. Your you know, inherent gifts, your intuition, your excitement doesn't matter. The things that you love don't matter. I love this, I'm really good at this, I wanna do this. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Eventually we have to get to the point where we're realizing we're kind of just saying you don't matter. Systemically, we're kind of saying you don't matter. And so what those young people, without any way to, to really reconcile that, what they're gonna do is figure out how can I matter? How can I make some sort of impact? How can I assert some sort of control I don't have it over my environment. I don't have it over my captors. I don't have it over, I've got no control. Those are the easiest thing for me to control is somebody younger and somebody smaller. That's about all I got in front of me that I can control. So yes, we've got a system that is designed and created to perpetuate from a social standpoint, a bullying system. And then we go, oh, by the way, you can't do that either. Yes, it's exactly what happens. And then what do we do too? Then what do we do? We also medicate them early and often. And one of the biggest travesties is that we've got a whole bunch of actually really good educators who go into the system to really go help young people, but they're told to be teachers. They're no longer allowed to observe and go, who is that human? How do I inspire that human? What is the journey he or she is on? Like, what can we go do together? Like, let's lift your eyes to the horizon. No, they're told to be teachers where it says, no, no, no. You've got the one pen that matters for every single other human under your control. We're gonna write one very narrow story and it doesn't matter if that person doesn't see that being their own hero's journey. You're gonna force everybody into that narrow story 
and then we're gonna make them comply with fear, where if you're not able to engage in that story, something's wrong with you. And here I was from my own indoctrination and damage as a child, taking what I had, what I thought was the right thing and what had been for, done for me and well, let's, you know, he needs to study, he needs to get good grades. And when my youngest looks at me and said, I hate my brain, I had to stop. I had to do something differently. I mean, I get a lot of flack from a lot of, because again, good humans in the system, right? There's good teachers who are there. And so a lot of times they'll get, they'll confuse what I'm saying as my, dis, my disdain for the system, they'll confuse it as disdain for them which is never ever the case. I'm the biggest supporter of good human beings who are teachers and administrators, but I will never support the system itself, right? My disdain is for the system. Who's, who's designing the recipe? How long has the recipe been around? Is the recipe even valid? Is it something we wanna eat with the end result for that recipe? Not for our family, we're, we've seen through that. So we're not interested in creating worker bees who are just gonna go get a new job and work alongside everybody else in their, their pods. That's not how our family's wired. That's not part of our family's culture. We're choosing to step outside of that. So people would, go, would think, you know, aren't you gambling with your kids' lives? You know, what if you're wrong? Well, what if you're wrong and they spent 12 years in school? Do you know how much evidence there is of how bad the school system is? You know, what if you're wrong and you did that? Well, what if you bring them over here and you try it out for a year or so and you're like, okay, this is, this is not right, this is wrong. Well, you know, you can always send them back. But what if you don't try? What if you never experienced it? What if you never investigated what this looks like for your child? And what if you're right? What if this is everything you could possibly ever imagine and then some, which is what it's been for me and for a lot of families, because you don't know what you don't know, and you're too afraid to make a change. And that's on you. Are you gonna sleep easy at night because your kid is suffering because, you're in, because of your inability to make a decision? That's on you. If you make a decision that's the wrong one, make another one. But don't sit on it because you're comfortable and it's what everybody else is doing. Stand up, stand out. Do the right thing. Do the right thing that you know you need to do for your child so they're not suffering anymore. I watched mine suffer and I was homeschooling, but I was taking the system and just doing it at home and I had to stop. And that's on me, I'm having to fix that. And this is helping me do that. I was angry. You may be angry as well. You may be angry that you went through the system. You may be angry you've put kids in the system. You have kids in the system now. You may be angry that this is something that has been done to young people for generations at this point. And I'm gonna encourage you to tap into the energy that that anger is creating. The energy itself is not a bad thing. It is an indicator that something is very, very wrong. But I'm gonna ask you not to fight wrong by doing other. We don't need to go get mad, we don't need to email our teachers, we don't need to go protest the schools, we don't need to, look, I applaud the voice, I applaud the energy, I applaud the desire to do something better. So let's do something better. Better has everything to do with creating the new, creating the alternative, creating something that lifts everybody else up, creating something that frees the thousands of slaves among us. If you're interested in that, reach out to us at apogeestrong.com. Join us as we use that energy to go build the better and to go save the heroes.